If you eat so healthy, why aren't you skinnier? Oh my god, you don't eat enough carbs. Blah, 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 blah. Every single time I post a video about what I eat, I get some sort of backhanded compliment or insult. And I got these comments when I was a tiny YouTuber with a few thousand subscribers. So I cannot imagine what the bigger YouTubers go through when they post a video about what they eat. You know, I get it. Diet is a very touchy topic and people get very, very defensive about the personal diet that they follow and God forbid someone else eats differently from them and has different views about food. All our war is about to break out. Truth is, there's probably not one right way to eat. There's 7.8 plus billion different right ways to eat. And today, I'm gonna show you guys what I think is the right way for me to eat to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. Even though I'm pretty sure I will hurt some people's feelings. Honestly, I just don't care anymore. Disclaimer, trigger warning. I personally haven't figured the nutrition thing all out. I'm not a registered dietitian or nutrition scientist, but I am a fitness nutrition specialist, so I do know a thing or two about nutrition, but definitely not everything. The science of nutrition is constantly unraveling and there's new data coming out every single year. So a good rule of thumb for myself personally is just to keep an open mind. So my diet is very simple. I do track calories very roughly, just very rough estimates. I estimate everything by multiples of five. So a zucchini is 35 calories roughly, half an avocado is 160 calories roughly, four ounces of tuna sashimi is around 125 calories, a quarter cup of dry quinoa is 170 calories and one pound of strawberries is 145 calories. These are generally things that I eat pretty often. I don't own or use a food scale yet because I'm at the beginning stages of my fat loss journey so it's probably not necessary at this point and it may never become necessary. I've actually never used a food scale up to this point. However, I do think that if you're someone who has recently hit a plateau, weighing and tracking your food more precisely can potentially help you get over that plateau. It really depends on your goals and whether or not that fits your lifestyle. For me personally, tracking rough estimates is enough. It's just a helpful tool for me to keep my portions in check and also provide helpful data for me during this fitness journey. So there's a really old member in my Slim Lake System program who has been struggling with the yo-yo cycle for some time now. She would restrict and just have an apple for breakfast and then binge at lunch. And nowhere in the program do I say to do something like that. A lot of the members members who struggle simply don't follow the instructions inside the program and they go off and do these crazy things on their own. I have no idea why. But anyways, inside the program, she was telling me about how other people were giving her this very cliche type of advice saying, oh, well, everything's fine in the right amount. This kind of advice is very good depending on who you tell this advice to. For someone who is very knowledgeable about nutrition, who's very in tune with their hunger cues, with very balanced hormones, no underlying health issues, this is great advice. But for a lot of people, including this member inside the program, these types of cliche advice isn't really helpful. It's usually not very helpful for people who have lost touch with their body signals and hunger cues. I know this from personal experience. I basically lost touch when I was in elementary school after being fed a diet of ultra processed food throughout my childhood. By the time I was in middle school, I was completely hooked on sugar, eating and drinking enormous amounts of added sugar on a daily basis. Plus, I seriously thought that Pop-Tarts were a health food. And if you're somebody that has been dieting, doing starvation diets, emotional binges, you're not ready for this advice either. I highly doubt this type of advice will really help you unless you have a intuitive eating coach or nutritionist helping you out in the background. So I suggested that she start tracking her calories about four months ago and not get too obsessive about it, just rough estimates exactly the same way I'm doing right now. And about four months ago, she finally decided to start doing that. Me and her, we've actually talked quite a lot inside of the program platform. She was also asking me recently what are some good replacements for junk food, and whatnot and a few days ago she told me that she lost eight kilograms which is amazing congratulations and keep up the great work for my own personal recomposition goals i'm not very strict about hitting a exact calorie number it's more of a range and the only other thing i'm keeping an eye on is my protein so i'm aiming for about 75 grams of protein per day so far since i've started tracking a few weeks ago i've been hitting between 50 to 80 grams of protein per day i did have a day where I had about 108 grams of protein. I have no idea how. But yeah, this is something I probably need to work on being more consistent with. So when it comes to fat loss, calories do matter. But I do 
want to emphasize that not all calories are created equal. Eating 100 calories worth of ranch dressing is not the same as eating 100 calories worth of Greek yogurt. Even drinking 100 calories worth of orange juice is not the same as eating 100 calories worth of oranges as a whole fruit. Different foods get metabolized in the body differently and fiber is actually a very important nutrient. For my own personal goals, I'm eating at around maintenance calories on the four days that I'm doing strength training. I'm even okay with being in a slight surplus on those days. On my rest days, I'm in a small to moderate calorie deficit. Recently, someone asked me how many calories do I eat? And if I say it on YouTube, it's gonna open up Pandora's box. My maintenance calories is very specific for me. It took me years of trial and error and tracking and educating myself about nutrition to figure out a rough estimate of what my maintenance calories really is. And it's going to be different from what your maintenance calories. How many calories you should be eating is something you need to figure out on your own. But I will tell you how to get a rough estimate. Go to this website, TDEE Calculator, type in your data. If you know your body fat percentage and your lean body mass, you can get a better estimate. These numbers are just estimates. They're not exact numbers. They don't take into consideration your lifestyle history, dieting history, ethnic background, underlying health issues, etc. Once you figure out your maintenance calories, anything less than that is a calorie deficit. Besides calories and protein, the only other thing that I really care about is limiting ultra processed foods and added sugars. I do have a weakness for protein bars which are still ultimately processed foods. I'm not perfect, I am human after all. My favorite childhood candy was Reese's Cups. During Halloween, they would sell these one pound bags of the stuff, you know, family size. Back in the day, I would always finish the entire bag in one sitting without fail. I don't think I was ever able to stop until the bag was completely empty. Right now, one of my favorite protein bars are these by Nugo because they are pretty much a replacement for me for my favorite childhood candy. They taste really good and they're definitely better for me than eating an entire bag of Reese's Cups. If you guys are really, really confused about what a healthy diet is supposed to look like, I feel you. I was just as confused as you guys for the majority of my life, only in these past few years do I have a smidgen of an idea of what a healthy diet is supposed to look like. In high school, I seriously thought that Pop-Tarts were a health food because they have all these vitamins on the nutrition label. In college, I thought that coffee and a cream cheese bagel was a healthy and balanced breakfast. And there is so much conflicting information on the internet. Like I said earlier, people get very defensive about the diet that works for them personally. And people are very biased. We're all biased. And a lot of people don't realize how biased they really are. So they passionately defend the way they eat as the only right way to eat. If you're confused, I highly recommend getting this book. Your mind is gonna get blown. Especially if you're living in the States like I am, it will really open your mind about why the food environment is the way it is here right now. So I come from a family of doctors. My grandfather was PhD in medicine, doctor, professor at a medical school. My dad also PhD in medicine, also a professor at a medical school at one point in his life. And he is still doing research in a medical lab to this day, even though he's supposed to be retired. He just really loves his work. My older brother followed their footsteps. He's now a surgeon slash oncologist. He helps cancer patients and I think my parents would have been really happy if I had gone the medical route but I was a rebellious kid and I always liked doing the opposite of what people were telling me to do but I think if I knew about Dr. Lustig in high school or sooner I might have been inspired to go the medical route and study nutrition science and endocrinology maybe I will go back to school and study that stuff who knows or maybe I'll just participate in the fight against ultra processed foods just like Dr. Lustig in my own way I do have a degree in politics by the way. In the book, he also talks a bit about the politics and economics behind our nutrition guidelines here in the US. Very, very interesting stuff. I highly, highly recommend. By the way, being a doctor and knowing about medicine is very different from knowing anything about nutrition. As a matter of fact, Dr. Lustig is actually going against the mainstream modern medicine by talking about nutrition the way he's talking about in this book. So he is sort of a rebel himself and maybe that's why I admire him so much. I 
样呢 ？The main message in the book is that ultra processed foods shouldn't even be considered food. And recently, there was a study that showed how ultra processed foods inhibit skeletal growth. So ultra processed foods literally stunt growth, according to the study. And it makes me wonder if my childhood diet didn't consist of 95% processed junk foods, would I be taller now? I am the shortest kid in my entire family, extended family included. My older brother is six foot two. Growing up, he did not eat as much of the ultra processed foods as I did. For some reason, I was just more addicted to the ultra processed foods. A lot of you guys asked me in the comments how to get taller, and I honestly don't know why you're asking me because I'm not very tall myself. But maybe the answer is don't eat ultra processed foods. Anyways, if you guys found this video helpful, be sure to drop a thumbs up. And if you guys want me to turn my current training schedule into a free YouTube program, please let me know. I made a video last week going into what my current training schedule looks like. Be sure to like that video if you want me to create the free program. I'm only asking because I really want to know if there's enough people interested in me doing that. Because otherwise, I can just do it in a vlog format, which is significantly easier for me. Making it into an actual program with real-time workouts and putting everything together into a program is a lot of work, especially because I do everything myself. So I'll only do it if a lot of people let me know they're interested in it. And you can let me know by liking this video and liking my last two videos, or leaving me a comment telling me that you're interested in this program. Otherwise, I'm not psychic. I'm not gonna know unless you do something to let me know. Alright, that's it for this video. Love you guys, and I will see you guys in the next one.